What's up, YouTube? Custom K here with KKRC. Just wanted to do a real quick video for you guys. I know that there's probably tons of videos just like this out there, but I wanted to do one for my fans and for anyone who maybe is looking for this and happens to come across my video instead of someone else's. <laughs> so, uh, I just wanted to show you guys what I'm going to be showing you today is... Uh, how to hook up your uh, Castle Link, um, pro, ca um, Castle Creations Castle Link. Blah, 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 blah. Can't talk there. Um, so, how to hook it up to your ESC and um, just the uh, menu and what shows up on your screen um, when you do so. If you have any Castle products, uh, Castle Creations BEC. Um, any Castle Motor ESC combo or even any Axial um, Electronics, Axial ESCs that are also a Castle, they're made by Castle so they're also compatible with this Castle Link. You can pick this Castle Link up online, um, pretty much at any RC website, uh, Castle.com, um, eBay, I think they're about... 20 bucks average price uh, depending on where you are in the world so that's twenty dollars twenty US dollars by the way so is what I'm gonna be doing and showing you guys today is I'm gonna be hooking this up I have my trail finder 2 here uh, as you can see I have my trail finder 2 here it's got the sidewinder 3 ESC in it um, right now I am also running a brushed motor not a brushless motor on a brushless ESC so I wanted to show you guys partly um, how to set that up uh, you definitely if, if this is something that you want to do uh, with the castle system such as the Sidewinder 3 um, you're definitely gonna have to have the castle link to do that uh, because this ESC is set up stand, set up from the factory to run brushless not brushed so that's what I'm going to be doing today. It's already set up for it, but uh, I'm just going to show you guys what I had to do. Another thing that this is really helpful for is uh, if you have a Castle Creations BEC, a lot of the new servos nowadays, um, just as an example, the one that I'm using here, which Savix is known for being uh, power-hungry servos. So this servo, a lot of these servos are spec um, for six volts and a lot of these ESC's even this Castle Sidewinder ESC the actual AE2 ESC um, pretty much every ESC out there that I've come across that's on the budget end or you know mid-level ESC are um, you know five volts 5.4 something around there and ideally you want to run it at six volts so that's another thing that you would need this for to hook it up I don't have a BEC in this vehicle, so I won't be showing you that today. But it hooks up and works the same way as you would do an ESC. Just when you open the program, it recognizes it's a BEC, not an ESC, and it prompts you with some different options. So I'm going to move you guys here into the computer screen now and show you what it looks like um, when you pop up the program. But before we do that, I need to come over here and uh, hook up the castle link to the computer and to my EFC. So, before we do that, I'm going to follow my ESC wire here. Try to. It's a mess. I have no idea which one it is. Um, let's see. I'm going to go on a whim and say that it's this one here. So I've unplugged my ESC wire, at least I think it is. If it doesn't work, we'll just unplug the other one. But is what you're looking for is the wire that's coming out of your ESC, the servo wire coming out of your ESC. So you take your castle link. I've kept mine wrapped up just to keep it nice and clean. Um, and this is what the castle link looks like. I can get it to focus. It's 
it's not gonna focus so well. Um, it's just a um, uh, com uh, computer board, you know, a PWB with some circuitry on it. You've got a little IC there, and there's also a few LEDs on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it into the computer now, and you should be able to see the LEDs light up. Okay, so there it is. You see the uh, LED powered on. There's a red one and a green one, but the red one is the only one on this now. Okay, and then I'm going to come over here and plug this into my um, ESC. You have on the uh, castle link, there's a plus and a minus. So is what you want to do is you want to line those up and make sure that you uh, get it right. Which actually, now that I'm looking at it, it looks like it doesn't matter because the plus is in the middle. So, uh, and the ground wire is on the right, the negative, which is the brown. So I'm gonna you want to plug it in the brown on the negative, and the orange on the little data symbol there. So we plug this in. Uh, you will need a battery for this, which I do not have, so I'm gonna go run and grab a battery real quick. And uh, then we'll move you into the computer screen so you can see what happens when you plug this in. Okay, welcome back. So we've got, I'm plugging in my battery now. Once I do this and cut on my ESC, I should get a prompt. I'm going to go ahead and open up the Castle Link um, uh, program, which you will have to download off Castle's website when you get the Castle Link. It doesn't come with the um, with the product. Uh, it is free though. You just simply go to their website and download it. No issues there. So I'm going to go ahead and open it here. Here it is. When you get the uh, Castle Link, it also comes with some other programs uh, or one other program, a graph view. Uh, so we've opened up the Castle Link here. And if you look, I've got a green status light, which is showing me that the USB is connected. It's showing that it recognizes that I've plugged in my USB to the computer and into the Castle Link. Now it popped up a, uh, a little um, troubleshooting here because I haven't cut on my battery yet. So I'm going to go back over here or I'm going to go ahead and cut on my ESC and it should uh, prompt me to a new menu. So the ESC is on. It should connect. If it is not connecting, it could be because I do have the wrong plug. So I'm going to try the other plug real quick. As I said in the beginning of the video, um, you know, I, I wasn't sure if I had the right plug. Looked like I had the steering servo plugged into there. Okay, so I'm about to plug in um, the Castle Link into the correct port now, which is the ESC port, so we should see something different. And there you have it. Immediately, as soon as I plugged it in, uh, it immediately changed and popped up the logo of the ESC that I have here. Uh, also, I'll bring you over here and I'll show you the Castle Link. Uh, the LEDs have changed. So if you look now, you can see that the LED is uh, green, not red. That indicates that it is plugged up and connected successfully. And if you notice here what I was talking about earlier, it finally focused. You see the negative, the plus, and the uh, data symbol here. So it, look, if you notice here, we've got brown on the negative red being the positive and orange being the data carrying the data so that indicates and that is correctly hooked up right there you can see the little IC on the uh, castle link that is what does all the programming and all the fancy stuff on the board that's really all that's this board is so we'll bring you back to the computer another way to tell that you have uh, done it correctly is if you look here let me. Uh, 
Another way to tell that you have done it correctly and uh, that, it's, that it's correctly connected and synced to, to your ESC, for one, as soon as I plugged it in, it immediately changed the logo and popped up um, this, this new menu here. But another way to tell is both of these lights are now green, the USB connection status and the device connection status. So uh, if we go here and we look up, get you up a little higher here, you can see at the top we've got some tabs. About, basic, power, advanced, throttle curve, brake curve, software, and save slash print. So first thing you're wanna, gonna wanna do when you hook up your ESC for the first time is come here to the software tab and uh, look at the available firmware updates and you're gonna wanna get the most current version of the firmware update. Uh, you can read here if you click changes and it'll show you what fixes have been done and what that update actually is. As I said before, I've already hooked this ESC up and uh, done all this, so I'm just running through it and showing you. Uh, the main tab here is the basic tab. This is where you're going to be doing all your um, adjusting. So you see here we have some different settings. Uh, volt voltage cutoff for LiPo batteries. Um, I still have it set to auto, but you can change that around, uh, mix it up. I wouldn't recommend changing that if you don't know what you're doing, as well as the auto LiPo um, volt cell uh, um, counter or whatever you want to call it. I wouldn't recommend changing that as well. Um, these things are, unless you know what you're doing, um, in which case you probably wouldn't be watching this video. So one thing that I did want to do while I was uh, in here is I wanted to change the reversing so we've got some other options here reverse type motor direction motor type which this here is where you would change uh, change if you're running a brushed motor on a brushless ESC like the Sidewinder 3 so real simple here there's three options and um, you have brushless which is default brushed reversing and brushed high power um, the brush high power, there's um, directions in the uh, manual explaining what that is. It's just a way to wire it differently. Um, I have mine wired standard like you would a normal brushless brushed motor, so I'm going to keep it on brushed reversing. Um, power on warning beep, you can cut that on and off. Brake amount, you can adjust, um, which in this case, since I'm using a crawler, that doesn't really apply to me, but drag brake here does apply to me. You can change the drag brake and uh, different things like that. So I do want to look at the reversing here and maybe adjust this reverse. I'm going to swap it. I was using the width reverse, which is defaulted. I'm going to change it to crawler reverse. I'm not sure the difference, but... Um, I wasn't too happy with the way it was reversing generic, so we're going to swap that and see if it changes anything. The other tabs we have here are power tab, shows your Mac. You can basically, um, uh, th you know, control the throttle like a governor almost. Uh, max power forward, max power reverse, punch control, which would be like a turbo if you have a, uh, a brushless motor set up. Um, and the advanced tab you have stuff for uh, sensor, sensorless motor timing um, and things like that. A lot of the stuff you really don't need to worry about unless um, you know you, you're getting into the more advanced stuff and you're and you're really fine tuning your motor. Throttle curve shows you can come in here and adjust um, your throttle for it to ramp up as uh, time goes on or as your input increases. And same with the brake curve. And that's what that other graph. Um, uh, thing is it comes with the castle link I don't really use that stuff just because I don't I don't need it um, so some other things you can do is when you set up these settings in here you can save them so you can mess around with different settings and then just open and, and uh, save and change around your settings you know real fast instead of having to go through and redo them all every time so uh, as I said before you know if you had a BEC it would basically show up the same way, except for I think you only have two tabs on a BEC, which is the about and a firmware update, and then uh, your basic, which really all it is is um, allowing you to change the, uh, the voltage of the BEC.
So that pretty much wraps it up for um, how to uh, hook up your Castle Link and uh, properly um, uh, do it and and you know change your settings in, uh, through through the computer and through the Castle Link. There is also something that they sell called a Field Programmer, which you can uh, put this data into the Field Programmer and do it on the field. Uh, that I do not have, so I won't be going over that with you today. The most important things that I would recommend when doing this and hooking up your Castle Link is the software update, and um, you know, really, if you as long as you keep the firmware updated, uh, everything should run smoothly. Please forgive me for the uh, shaky camera. My my tripod here is on its last leg, so that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Uh, as I said before. Um, you can use this Castle Link with uh, Axial devices, Axial products. Um, so that's something that is uh, kind of neat. I haven't actually hooked it up yet, but I have seen it done, so I know it is doable. Um, and you can adjust. You have all the same features. You can adjust all the same stuff uh, that you could with um, the Sidewinder Three. So that pretty much is it. That wraps it up. Um, thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Uh, if it was, be sure to hit the like button um, if, if you like what you saw. And uh, if you'd like to see more videos and how-to videos and running videos, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. One more quick tip that I wanted to mention to you guys, to you guys that I forgot to mention uh, in the video when I was explaining um, how to use the Castle Link when uh, adjusting your ESC and things like that um, is if you notice when I did it I was on a, uh, a Microsoft PC uh, as of right now you cannot use a Castle Link with a Macintosh computer uh, unless uh, of course you know you uh, have rooted it or um, uh, partitioned it to where you have Microsoft Office on your Mac then of course you can but if you're running a Mac OS operating system, uh, you know you are uh, you will not be able to use this Castle Link. That's one important thing to consider uh, when buying Castle products and pre purchasing this Castle Link. Is um, if you only have a Macintosh computer, you will not be able to adjust the settings. As far as I know, um, they have not changed that. So that's just one other quick tip that I wanted to throw in there for you guys uh, before I forgot. That sums this video up. Thanks for watching.